We're in an era now of technologies advancing faster than they ever have before, raising important questions about labor market disruptions. But I'm going to talk to you instead about how we can leverage these technologies to learn skills in ways that were never before possible and unlock our full potential. And in particular, I'm going to talk about how we can digitize the master-apprentice relationship. So it's hard to avoid today's stories about AI and machine learning advancing in our capabilities and really reaching un unprecedented levels. At the same time, robotics and automation systems have the potential to streamline physical tasks, as you he see here in this amazing video from uh, Amazon Fulfillment Warehouse. Now, in some cases, these change the nature of the work that humans do. But in other cases, they completely remove the humans from the equation. So with autonomous vehicles alone, it's projected that this is going to cost approximately 300,000 jobs to be lost per year once they reach their peak. Now, that's a scary number. And it's natural to be frightened about this, but we're still quite a ways away from AI and machine learning replacing everything we do and robots taking over our jobs. So we're not quite off the hook yet. Instead, and what we've learned in the past, is that these disruptive technologies don't take away our jobs. They change the nature of the work that we do. And in essence, they create these hybrid systems where humans and technologies work together. So in the context of architecture, which is where I work at Autodesk Research, architects now learn to use computer-aided design software. They no longer need to become masters of physical drafting skills. So now is a time more than ever when we need to have adaptable expertise, often learning new skills on the job. And I'm going to talk to you about how we can digitize the master-apprentice relationship to do this. Now, technology-guided learning is nothing new. And in fact, even before computers existed, psychologists were developing what they called teaching machines that were thought to lead to an industrial revolution of teaching. It was to the point where it was even questioned whether the learning experience would become fully automated and our teachers would be replaced by robots. Of course, it's a vision that was never realized, although I always question about my own grade four science teacher. <laughs> but the, the capabilities of today's technologies do allow us to learn in ways that were never before possible. Like I said, I work at Autodesk, which makes some of the world's most advanced technology and software for doing 3D design, from towering skyscrapers to special effects in Hollywood movies. It also happens to be some of the most complex software to learn in the world, having hundreds and often thousands of commands and workflows that you need to become a master of. Now, with my colleagues at Autodesk Research in the User Interface Research Group, I've spent the last 10 years of my research trying to understand how technology can aid in the learning process in these complex environments. For example, we can instrument the software to track everything you're doing. And by analyzing what the experts are doing and what the rest of the community is doing, we can recommend new commands and workflows for you to use. So with this project, which we called Community Commands, the learning is occurring in real time. As you're working with the system, personalized recommendations are coming to you, just as if you were working right next to an expert. But I ask myself, can we extend this paradigm of what we call over-the-shoulder learning beyond just computer-based tasks? Can we use technology to achieve mastery in the physical realm and unlock our potential? In essence, what I was asking is, can we digitize the master-apprentice relationship? Let's look at a couple examples to motivate this. Here's an athlete using a training apparatus to improve their baseball swing. Now, surely this type of repetitive practice is going to have some benefits. But he might be making some errors. And a device like this is completely passive. It's providing no feedback on the errors he's making and no guidance on specific things that he could improve upon. What I want to do is to provide ways for systems like this to provide a model of mentorship so people can learn in the midst of an activity. Let's consider a best-in-class example of this. 
So what this person needs is a Mr. Miyagi. This is, of course, from the, the movie The Karate Kid. And if you go back and watch the scene where Mr. Miyagi is teaching Daniel all these, all these different movements, it's actually a really great example of the rich interactions that occur between a master and an apprentice. Mr. Miyagi doesn't just show the movements. He's constantly providing feedback and guidance to Daniel. He's also creating this close personal connection so we can truly understand what it is that Daniel needs to learn best. Now, to add a personal touch to this story, I had my own Mr. Miyagi. Perhaps a unique hobby for a computer scientist. I train in Muay Thai. So this is the Thai equivalent to kickboxing. And there with me is Simon Marcus, who is my master or in Thai crew. Now, I was incredibly fortunate to work with Simon. He's actually a two-time world champion in kickboxing and still an undefeated professional Muay Thai fighter. So Simon provided me all the necessary things I needed to know to learn the physical skills surrounding Muay Thai. What was also very clear from working with Simon was he's very good at understanding each individual student and what their strengths and weaknesses were and to teach accordingly. And that's a fundamental aspect of the master-apprentice relationship and something that doesn't always occur in the one-size-fits-all approach to education. And I'm sure every one of you here can think about a mentor that you've had in your life, whether it was as a child or even as an adult, that's had a significant impact on who you are today. For me, I was fortunate to work with Simon. Now, not everyone has their Mr. Miyagi or their Simon Marcus when they need them the most. So the question remains, can we digitize, and by doing so, democratize this master-apprentice relationship? And I would argue that with today's emerging technologies, we can do just that. So here's some examples. This is a project we did called UMove, where we used an augmented reality mirror to teach physical skills such as dance and athletics and get the feedback that you typically, typically get from a trainer. The system would capture your movements with a 3D depth camera and then compare them to the recorded movements of an expert. Personalized feedback was then projected back on the mirror and you'd see it overlaid on your own physical reflection. Applying this to the trades, this is a project we called the Smart Makerspace, which emerged digitized learning content within a physical makerspace environment. As you worked on a physical task, the system would guide you on how to use the required tools and materials. It would track your progress through the task and update the instructions in real time. But can we take this even further? What about large-scale construction like this? Can we take the traditional mentorship model and digitize it within this context? With our crowdsource fabrication project, we did exactly that. So with this project, we had over 100 volunteers spontaneously come together and build this 12-foot tall pavilion structure. What was interesting about this project is that the volunteers had no prior uh, knowledge of the, of the project, the structure, or the tools and materials that were needed to build it. Instead, we used a combination of wearable devices and sensors integrated in the environment to provide real-time learning. Here's a brief overview of the experience. So when volunteers came to the environment, they were given a smartwatch. And the smartwatch provided just-in-time and location-aware instructions. They were first directed to gather three pieces of bamboo and then take those bamboo pieces to a robotic device where they'd load them onto a special tool. They would tie a string to the bamboo and then the robot would begin a special fabrication method to create individual modules. There were 224 unique modules in the construction of this pavilion. Now this is showing a powerful concept where again, humans and technology are working in a collaborative way together to do something that would be difficult for either of them to do independently. Once a module was completed, the human worker would remove it from the robot and have to figure out where it goes, because each module was unique. So what we did was we embedded wireless LEDs within the actual materials that would illuminate and show the worker exactly where their module had to go. This entire process was coordinated by a back-end intelligent agent, which we called a digital foreman engine. And in the end, we had the world's first example of what we called crowdsourced fabrication, 
where a group of unskilled volunteers came together to build an architectural scale structure using a combination of user interface technologies. Now here's where this gets really exciting. There's volunteer efforts across the world, such as Habitat for Humanity, where volunteers come together to construct housing for low-income families. Imagine the implications if each worker came to, to the site and received the learning and training resources they needed in real time while they contributed to the build. Another example that's very relevant is the construction and assembly of shelters for refugees and asylum seekers. With new fabrication techniques today, there's companies like Better Shelter that are creating shelters that are more robust and can provide families with more security. But the assembly is still a major bottleneck. And let's just say the instructions for assembling these are suboptimal. They're literally like following IKEA in instructions to try to build a house. So the technologies I've been showing you could potentially lead to builds like this occurring in fractions of the time and also giving the workers lifelong skills that they can carry forward. The master-apprentice relationship is something that has been around with us for centuries. But with these new technologies, we have opportunities to learn in ways that were never before possible. We can digitize the master-apprentice relationship and unlock our full potential. Now, my challenge to you going forward for developers, designers, and computer scientists is to think about ways we can incorporate the personal aspects of these master-apprentice relationships into our broader interactions with technology. Thank you.